Hello Internet, I am the Hero of Julios once again with another One Piece chapter summary. This week's chapter is chapter 1112, Hard Aspects. Uh, our artwork for this week is the cover story continuing. Uh, Kinemon is giving Yamato a parting gift under the condition that she does something specific for him. We don't really know um, what that thing is, but I'm sure that'll be explained throughout this. Uh, I do want to say I forgot how tall Kinemon is, because... I didn't, I, I wasn't expecting them to be the same height, and then, yeah, I remember when Brooke was comparing their heights, so, yeah, I forgot, Kinemon's an absolute unit in terms of, like, how big this guy is. Anyways, let's get into the actual chapter itself, which starts off with Venus Juro uh, taking out the last of the pacifista, the marines are all cheering because an unknown ally took out those things, because, again, the Gorosei are being very private about their beast forms, their half beast forms. Whether they have devil fruits or actually are the yokai themselves, are that's up to be determined still. But for now, they are still a unknown force. Although I'm really shocked that Mars was able to fly up as his giant Itsumade form and not draw any attention to himself as a giant bird. But maybe, maybe all the Marines were just looking down at the time. They just didn't see the bird. Whatever the reason, that's pretty much where that went. So, as uh, he's taking those things out, though, we have Oimo and Kashi just casually saying how they're going back to the ship. There's some powerful enemies on the island, and that's kind of all that it leaves with. But I think Oda's using that as a way to get them to a specific position, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but we're, we're bouncing around a lot here. In fact, we're bouncing to the ship, the ship of the giants where red king and pomsky are both there to stop jewelry bonnie and frankie from getting there and red king gets his attack ready and frankie gets up with a strong right and one shots red king yeah that's right frankie's strong enough to just one shot a vice admiral now so that's that's pretty good for all you power scalers at home uh does that mean red red king is not very strong or is frankie stronger than a vice admiral now like is could Frankie take out any Vice Admiral? Can we get Frankie versus Smoker? Um, I don't know. I'm not really a power scaler myself, but that's a really cool accomplishment for Frankie. I, I have a friend who, that's his favorite straw hat, so I'm sure this is going to be a good chapter for him. But Bonnie takes out Pomsky by turning him into a little kid and kicking him in the face. Uh, I will not show that here on YouTube because I'm not really sure um, if that counts as uh, child endangerment. Uh, see, here's the thing. Bonnie's 12, so if she ages herself up and then ages someone else down and hurts them, is it an adult hurting a child, or is it a child hurting an adult? Is it a child hurting a child? I don't know what the legal ramifications of that are, so I'm just going to let you read the chapter if you want to see Bonnie kick a small child. <laughs> but even even the Marines watching this happen, they're just like, I don't know if we should like should we should we arrest her for that or should we arrest her for the whole pacifista thing going back to the pacifista thing uh venus juro as he's taking out the pacifistas one by one with his sword he actually does mumble under his breath a 12 year old girl vegapunk you gave a 12 year old the power to level an island even for a genius that's that's madness that's crazy that's not a wise decision you're only saying that because you're not in control of the pacifistas that's why you're, just, you're being being a baby is what he's being meanwhile meanwhile i'm going to be saying meanwhile a lot this chapter uh mars and york are together and they're kind of searching through to find where the footage is coming from and they get to the lab where vegapunk initially recorded this him and his satellites were all together and uh, York just tells him, okay, this, this should be the room where we recorded it. So if we look around and Mars just blows the entire room up, he just, Pah! so apparently he has a giant breath beam, probably like a blast breath, like Kaido's. Uh, but York is just like, what, what, what did that do? Why, why did you do that? Why did you destroy that entire lab? And he's just like, I got rid of the problem. The broadcast just keeps going. And she goes, you didn't get rid of squat. And he, it, it sounds like. When you're trying to explain to your grandfather that uh, just because you deleted it off the desktop does not mean you deleted it from the computer. And it's like, well, well, then obviously if I need to get rid of it, I'll just destroy the monitor. Blows up the monitor. No, Grandpa, that, that you, it's the computer, 
not the monitor. The monitor just shows you things. And it's <laughs> it literally sounds like York is trying to tech support with this elderly gentleman who has probably never even thought about a computer. So as she's explaining this to him, he says, well, why don't I just blow up all the buildings? You know, I'll just start with this one over here. And she goes, no, 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 no. If you do that, you're going to blow up the power supply that powers the mother flame. You don't want that. You don't want to do that, right? And he's like, okay. And if you blow up that area, you're also going to blow up all the weapons we've developed. You don't want to lose the weapons, right? Okay. Okay. What about this building? Well, if you blow up that building, you're going to get, you're going to ignite all the gases we have in there and blow up everything, which would also blow up. The things I don't want blown up. The things you don't want blown up. Yes. Okay. So where is so where's the where's the transponder snail? I'm trying to help you figure this out, and he's just like, wait. I sense a tiny voice coming up there with my observation hockey. She's just like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Stella might have put him up inside of the of the brain. So, uh, you know, the big top part of Egghead is where Vegapunk's brain is stored. And yeah, uh, the transponder snail is probably up in there. And she goes, okay, so it's, it's triangular shaped and it's, it's kind of small. It's a new type of transponder snail that we developed. So, you know, you'll have to, you know, it's, it's different. It looks different than a normal transponder snail. And he's like, okay, well, show me how to get in there. And that's where we cut away from that. Meanwhile... Stussy and Kaku are in the room where we initially had the rest of the crew gathered together. Kaku's still in a bubble. Stussy's on the computer, and Kaku goes, Oh, kind of sucks for you. Everybody kind of left you behind, you know? Don't you feel a little betrayed? I mean, I'd feel sorry for you if I wasn't stuck in a bubble because you betrayed me. <laughs> She's like, Oh, no, you're fine. I didn't, uh, I didn't get left behind. I chose to stay behind. And Kaku's like, Oh, no. I know what that means. Why Why did you choose to stay behind? And she goes, well, somebody has to take care of the final part of this plan. And poor Kaku. Kaku's just been sucked up in all of this. Luchi lunging into battle without, you know, proper code. And then Kaku having to fight Dracul Mihawk and Roanoa Zoro at the same time via the Seraphim Mihawk. And then, you know, on top of everything else, he gets trapped in a bubble, which, let's let's be honest, no matter how you say it, being trapped in a bubble is very degrading, very not intimidating at all. You are now known as the guy who is defeated by bubbles. There's literally a bubble user on your team. You think Califa's going to let him live this down, that he got defeated by a bubble? So the reason Stussy stayed behind to work on a piece of a project is because, say it with me, meanwhile, Nami, Usopp, Edison, Chopper, Robin, Lilith, and Brooke are all preparing to get the Thousand Sunny out of there. What Stussy's gonna do is stay behind, uh, basically power down the Labo phase, like, barrier, so that they can Kuda burst off and, you know, get away. But Robin brings up the point that we don't have Vega Force 1 anymore, so how are we going to make the full jump? The plan was Vega Force 1 carries us to the edge of the island, then we Kuda burst off, but now we don't. And Usopp, of all people, is just like, well, you know, it does kind of suck. But here's the good news. We all have freakish weird powers. So we're going to coup to burst and then we're just going to make it up from there like we always do. We got Zoro. He can, you know, slice the air or something. Robin can make propellers with her hands, maybe. Nami can control the weather. Brook. Chopper. Usopp could summon like a trampoline flower or something like he did, a, you know, back in Dressrosa, I think it was. There was the trampoline flower. Oh, no, it was. um, He's used it a couple times. But anyways, uh, but there's there's ways for the Straw Hat crew to get the ship flying without a Cuda burst. They are that crazy strong now. Uh, this confidence from Usopp actually spurs Edison on to make his own crazy decision as Edison jumps off the Lavo phase. Uh, with the intent of taking care of something. And he's just like, don't you worry, Straw Hat crew. You've inspired me to take risks just like you guys have. Okay, amount of bodily harm I am about to take is 78%. <sighs> I don't know what Edison's going to do, but it's going to be pretty cool. Because uh, you definitely don't willingly take 78% damage for just a guess. 
for just a gamble. So we'll see what Edison pulls off, but say it with me. Meanwhile, Luffy, Dory, and Bragi are currently fighting, or not fighting, they're running from St. Jupiter, who has turned into a giant sandworm. And apparently, uh, the sandworm has the ability to create a Kirby-esque vortex. So he is sucking them in, and even as strong as Dory and Bragi are, they are unable to get away from the vacuum that this giant worm is making. Fortunately, Luffy just takes a building and, in cartoon fashion, stuffs it in his mouth and just says, Hey, if you're hungry, eat this. Funk. And after Luffy slams that into his mouth, he reunites with Dory and Bragi, and the three of them are running, and Luffy finally powers down. He is no longer in Gear 5th. And Dory and Bragi are like, Oh, what happened to you, Straw Hat? You turned into an old man. And Luffy tells him, uh, I'm too weak. I need food. And that's when they give him a delicious piece of Hakal. Or hark harkal, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a Scandinavian food. It is fermented shark. I have never had it, but from what I have read online, uh, you definitely want to plug your nose before you eat it, uh, because apparently the smell is revulsive. Not not the taste so much. The taste is, well, according to uh, Broggy, it's pretty good once you get used to it, but. The smell is absolutely awful. The shark meat is enough to get Luffy back to non-old man form. He's he's back to base Luffy. He's not in gear fifth anymore, but he is not a weak old man. So at least the fermented shark it has a lot of energy to provide. And Luffy's going to need that energy because just because you stopped one elder doesn't mean another one's not coming at you. And the big pig, we got, you know, War Curry, he's charging towards him. And Luffy's like, don't worry, guys, I got this. Luffy jumps up pulls out the red rock, slams into his head. Just as a reminder, red rock is the attack Luffy used on Kaido. The attack that hit Kaido so hard that Big Mom actually thought Kaido was knocked out for a moment, where she was like, okay, buddy, you can get up now. Don't make me fight them alone. And Kaido got up and was like, oh, okay, Straw Hat's learned how to use hockey properly. Let's, you know, this, this is going to be interesting. War Curie doesn't even flinch. He just keeps walking. In fact, Luffy, you know, Red Rock is a very fire-based attack because of the friction and probably some Gear 5th shenanigans and stuff, but Luffy actually burns his hand. War Curie is that strong when it comes to his armament hockey. This kind of leads into my theory that I don't know if all five elders have um, Conqueror's hockey, but we have seen War Curie use it, so we know at least one member has it. And we also know that when Luffy clashed with Katakuri, Katakuri's armament hockey also burned Luffy. So maybe the fiery passion of your willpower is what causes the burning? Whatever the reason, uh, War Curie is not giving up, so the three of them just keep running away. So the final meanwhile of this chapter takes place in three different locations. First, we see Usopp and Nami and Chopper all freaking out as these massive spider legs start making their way over the cloud. Next, we have a very intimidating, very cool silhouette of Venus Juro standing in front of the ship of the giant pirates looking down at Frankie, Atlas, and Bonnie. And then finally, we have um, Mars. Mars has found the little transponder snail with the weird triangular-shaped shell. And he's standing there and he goes, Well, well, well. Looks like uh, luck was not on your side, Vegapunk, as this gurgling sound effect is happening. My guess is the gurgle is Vegapunk's brain, but only time will tell. I'm most worried about Frankie... Don't get me wrong, Saturn versus the weakling trio, that's pretty intimidating. But you also have to remember, Zoro and Jinbei are also heading that way. They've got Brooke. Robin can probably do a couple things in her current position. Maybe not a lot of fighting on her part. And oh, hopefully Saturn doesn't just immediately go for her since she can read the pwn glyphs. That would actually be a really big problem. But I'm worried about Frankie. Frankie one shot a Vice Admiral. Congratulations, Frankie. We're very proud of you. You are definitely one of the strongest Straw Hat crew members. But this is this is one of the five elders. 
Unfortunately, Oimo and Kashi are heading back to the ship, as Oda hinted at at the beginning of the chapter. So, I'm hoping when all looks lost and he's, you know, coming down to slash Frankie, that's when Oimo and Kashi come and they 2v1 him with Frankie on their shoulders, blasting laser beams the whole while, and maybe that's enough to get the rest of the giant pirates together. They just dogpile this guy or whatever the reason. I still think that the message is going to get sent. I think Mars failed. I think Mars found the wrong um, transponder snail or what have you because of a couple reasons. One, it's we're, we're too late into One Piece. Stop teasing us, Oda. Just let us hear the true history of the world already. Two, something York said to him, where because she was, you know, she was preparing a weapon and she says, you know, don't worry, you know, we're going to find, you know, knowing Stella, I have a few places I can guess, and I don't want to rack up any more crimes against you guys. And Mars seems a little confused by that statement. I'm a little confused by that statement. Um, I, I don't want to say York is going to turn coat and help Vegapunk get away like this was her plan all along or something, but maybe... I don't know. Maybe it's because this one panel just makes York look really cute, and I just I'm too much of a simp to not hold out a tiny inkling of hope that York is gonna be a good guy. York, why'd you have to be evil? Why'd you have to be evil and cute? Anyways, but I also think that Vegapunk would definitely have more than one failsafe. Why would he just leave one snail transmitting this entire thing on his Killman switch? Whatever the reason, though, doesn't look like we're on a break next week. So I'm hoping we at least start the big Joy Boy flashback. Or not Joy Boy, but maybe like the Vegapunk Truth flashback or the history lesson. Maybe if it, maybe it's not even a flashback. Maybe it's just a history lesson provided by the Vegapunk Foundation. However it happens, though, I'm going to be here reading it. I'm a little sick right now. I don't know if you can tell by the way I've been talking or where my mind has been wandering. So I'll probably be healthier by next week, ready to really shine through and maybe not wander around a lot thought wise. Cause I've already said that twice, but anyways, um, thank you for watching as always. I will see you in the next video. This is the hero of Julios Xing out.